Okay, this is now the five minute tarot for the 20th of July, 2017. And some, sometimes I make two or three videos in the same day and then edit them. And so I'm kind of ahead. But yesterday I made the T-A-R-O-T -T part one about 7.30 in the morning and then put it up. And it's about 24 hours later. And I'm going to do part two. And sometimes with a reading, you probably know this, that you turn a card and you know what to say, so you, you, you can talk. But there can be other times when you turn the card and you're not quite sure what to do with it, or you're not quite sure what, it, what sense it makes. So you need to scramble or grope around and, and go off at tangents and um, ramble on for a while and then it's going to click and you're going to have an idea of what to say. And today is a bit like that because um, I kind of know what to say or what I want to say, but at the same time, I have no idea. So not that I'm going to bluff, but it's a bit like I've got these various possibilities and um, I'm not quite sure which one to choose or which direction to go in. But before I came downstairs here, I was thinking about music. And so you've got in, in an octave, you've got seven white notes and five black notes. And that's 12 notes. But think of the millions of different songs. I mean, you've got C, C major, the, the middle key, and then you've got seven white notes above it and five black notes above that. That's, that's only 12 notes, but you get a huge variety, a huge number of different possibilities and different sounds and different tunes from these 12 notes. And with the major trumps, we've got 26 letters in the alphabet, but we've got 22 cards. So if you can do phenomenal, or you can create phenomenal variation with 12 notes in an octave. Imagine how much more you can do with 22 major trumps and what they represent in the different combinations with different questions. And so when if you do this exercise and play with letters and major trumps, and if you think, I'm going to run out of, of things to say, or this is just, I'm seeing the same thing over and over again. Think about an octave and think about music and how um, uh, the same notes can really, even though it's the same notes you're working with, you can have different atmospheres and emotions and messages and so on from, even though it's the same, it's the same notes in like C major. So... This, this, I think, is partly because Anne and Ian sent me an email yesterday. She, they, they watched, or one of them, or both of them watched the first video. Um, and so I had mentioned in it that they, we've got T-A-R-O-T. -T, so they are in the middle. Maybe you can go both ways. Um, so you can go O-R-A and A-R-O. And so they are one of them sent me an email about with ideas about what could be meant by different the the three letters the three cards um the tower judgment and the magician in different combina or different orders different sequences so it was interesting what they wrote. I don't think here this channel is the right place to deal with it, which makes me think I'm going to start the blog again and maybe ideas could be developed better in a blog because um, it could be short entries with connections to longer explorations of the, of the particular point that's being made. But so I wanted to remind viewers that it's important with when you're doing something like this, to remember that there's a word that we're exploring, because if you do O-R-A and A-O-R and R-A-O and R-O-A, this is quite interesting. And you, you're going to spot connections and you're going to come up with ideas. But we're supposed to remember that what we're doing is understanding better what T-A-R-O-T -T is about or what it means. So 
instead of just picking two or three cards and looking at them in different combinations or different sequences, start with a word because it'll orient you and give you, um, it, it'll ground you. So we're looking at, or I began yesterday looking at T-A-R-O-T. And so I mentioned about the fact that we happen to have an odd number of letters. So the R in the middle is like the balance point or it's the, the midpoint. So maybe with, we've got, looking at that particular word, we've got R in the middle and the R represent is represented by judgment, which is the angel blowing the trumpet and the people emerging from the coffin. So maybe the TA at the beginning of tarot represents the condition before the freedom of the judgment card and the OT in tarot represents what happens after the coffin lid has been removed and you're free. Do you know what I mean? Just because I'm not saying that you always do this with a five letter word. It just so happens that we've got this particular word that we're exploring. And again, go back to music. We've got an octave. So we've got f seven white notes and five black notes. And we're just sort of tinkling and playing with the different notes and going back and forth. So in the same way, I think what we're doing with this exercise is we're just seeing what we see without thinking that we've got to come up with a definite answer or that anything we come up with is always true and we've always got to be able to make use of it. It's more kind of like jazz where you play different notes and see what works. So with tarot, T-A-R-O-T, -T, you've got T as the fool who represents... So it's like with the tarot, you begin with a, with a sense of adventure, the, the fool, or a sense of a desire to explore. That's the T, the fool. Then you've got A. A is a magician, and the magician, the r origin of the word magician, it means to be able or to have power. So when you start working with the tarot, you realize that you are able, that you can. And also you've got a certain amount of power. And think of it, people come to you, you know, do, do a reading for me. And you've got power over that person because you can tell them anything. And because it's the tarot, they're kind of going to believe you. They may not like what you have to say, but doing a tarot reading, actually you're dealing with power. You've got power to, to help people or power to mess them up. And you think of all these scams in the newspapers and, and reported in TV where this tarot reader said, you know, give me 10,000, you've, you've been cursed. Give me $10,000 and I'll remove the curse. So that's power over somebody else. And maybe we need to go back to the fool and, and be fool-like. So we don't abuse the power that we get from looking at tarot cards. So we've got the fool and then the magician. So we've got power. And maybe the first thing that, the, the, that we have to learn with the tarot is to control ourselves and to control how we use this power and to control our imagination as well. Because the card that comes after A is... R, which is the judgment card that represents freedom. So you get this angel blowing a horn and, and the people are um, emerging from, the, from their coffin. So when you recognize that you can, you have freedom. And maybe what you understand from the A and the R in tarot is that we, maybe we, 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 it's important to control their imagination. And so you can look at that R following the A and realize that we create our own, maybe we create our own prisons, that we, instead of when we feel restricted, we, we can understand that we play a role in creating the conditions that, in, that trap us. So this angel isn't something out there or up in the sky. It's us because we can, because we have power. So that's the T-A-R. And then the O, because it's the tower, 
maybe what happened, maybe what the tower was about, you've got power and insight and you understand more deeply what's going on, but you can't get carried away or you're not supposed to get carried away. You're meant to come back to earth, which is the people falling out of the tower. So it's important to um, not let your imagination control you, but for you to control your imagination and to examine your thoughts and control your thoughts so you don't get carried away, so that you can come back to earth and apply, maybe apply practically what you learn through connection with the angel or your moments of insight. And that can be the importance and the value of having a question. So if you have a question and you pick a card to answer that question, that's like the tower. You're coming back to earth. You're taking cosmic understanding, let's say, but you're doing something with it. It's no it's not just out there and flying around space, not really doing anything. You're bringing it back to earth. <clears throat> And you're doing something with it or helping the, the person or the questioner to be realistic or to do something definite or specific with their power. Going back to the magician, I can. Right. So we, we come back to we come back to Earth. And this can mean that we understand then that the tower, even though it shows destruction and people heading down to Earth, the tower kind of a good side in that if if the tower brings you back to reality, so to speak. That's a good thing. Not that we're twisting the tower to make it seem good, but it's more like a recognition that coming back to Earth can, in some circumstances, be a, an, a sal salvation. It can save you from, you know, being stuck in your head all the time and, not, and just imagining stuff and, and imagining the worst which is creating your own prison and locking yourself in a coffin. Whereas if we can um, observe our, thought, our thinking and observe what we're thinking and, and deal with it sensibly, then we can be free. And then we come back to Earth and we've got, so we've got the O and the T, so we begin the whole process over and over again, T-A-R-O-T. Okay, that's one, something you can do with those letters of the alphabet. And, um, uh, okay, I run out of things to say, so I'm going to stop and I'll see you tomorrow. Okay, bye-bye.